Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another loft bombing tutorial. Um, been doing a few of these on my channel. So far we've done the Mirage 2000, the Harrier, the Viggen, and the Hornet. If you haven't watched those videos, you might want to go back and check them out, either before or after you watch this one. Today we're going to be taking a look at the F-15E, but we're going to be doing it with a bit of a twist, because we're going to locate the target entirely by radar. Uh, which is going to be a little bit different. So, um, you know, let's get started. So we're in the cockpit here, just getting uh, set up with the screens. i um, going to set up my, uh, my drop. I am carrying four, yes, count them, four 2,000-pound bombs. We're going to drop them all in ripple single in this pass. So that should be a fair bit of hurt that we're going to be able to put on the target. And with that done, we're just going to put the teapot on the left screen, going to leave the HSI on the right for now, but the right screen is where we're going to be doing all the radar work from once we get up and going. So I think we are about ready to get started. So you will notice that there's one difference in this video from all of the others, and that is that we're starting from Batumi instead of Kobaletti, which is where we normally fly from for these videos. So we're just going to head up to the runway here. We're taking off uh, to the west uh, over the coast. And actually, once we uh, take off, we're actually going to turn left. We're going to turn uh, southwest as well. Okay, just getting ourselves turned out on the runway here. And we will get started. So you will remember that the F-18 was the last uh, aircraft we did. And it was pretty impressive. It was actually able to get within 50 meters of the target, loft bombing from 9 kilometers away, and it dropped, uh, I think it was... Eight 1,000-pound bombs, so basically a similar payload, but uh, more bombs. So let's see how we compare to that today. All right, here we go, getting up to speed. The nose is starting to come up. Just got to avoid letting it come up too quickly. There it goes. Hold it there, get the gear up, and the flaps coming up and build up some speed for the climb up. So why is the fact that uh, I emphasize that we're going to be doing this by radar in the F-15 such a big deal? Because it really is the difference between this and all of the other aircraft we've done. And, and that's because in all the other videos, we actually located the target that we bombed by a map reference. I mean, it, it's a target on the range, so we know where it is, so that wasn't very hard. Uh, now, in the Mirage 2000, we did do a dynamic update to the inertial nav system to improve our accuracy. That was one of the points of actually doing it. But the target location that we've used has always been predicted off the map. If you go back and watch those videos, you'll actually see uh, some you know, reference to the map in the cockpit as we're planning the mission. In fact, in those other videos, if we hadn't flown over the target at the end to see where the bombs went, uh, we never would have seen the target at all. And that's because the point of loft bombing, obviously, is specifically to stay away from the target area, both for our own safety, including standoff from any of the uh, point defense, uh, air defense weapons that might be there, but also, you know, it could be for the sake of surprise. If we fly around locating the target, even if we do it from a few nautical miles away with a teapot or something, uh, we're going to make it obvious that we're coming, and we don't want to do that. Well, with the F-15, we can use radar to locate the target from more than 20 nautical miles away, and we can still get a fix that's accurate enough to loft bombs onto it, which is about what we're going to go prove. Now, not only that, uh, we're going to prove today that we can do it through cloud cover, because as you can see, we've got an overcast layer here at about uh, seven, 8,000 feet. We're going to fly through it and actually do all of our radar work from above it. So no one on the ground will really see us coming, or at least if they weren't DCSAI that can see through clouds, they wouldn't see us coming. But in order to do this successfully, we need to be uh, quite far back from the target before we start using the radar. Probably as much as 40 nautical miles away. 
and so that's why we've l l uh, left from v Batumi, and that's why we've turned left when we came out of Batumi, because we need to give ourselves some distance from the target up there at the Kobaletti range. And so we're going to get at least 40 nautical miles away before we swing back in and start using the radar to find it. So as you can see, I've got the uh, air-to-ground radar up on the right-hand screen. I haven't been uh, explaining how I've done all this. There are some excellent videos about how to use the cockpit and systems in the F-15E, so I'm not trying to give a tutorial on how to do that, uh, although I will uh, talk a little bit about how to use the radar explicitly. You can see we have the teapot up on the left screen. It's not doing very much for us above the clouds right now. Probably could have something else up there, but I'm just uh, this is the way I've been practicing it. So as you can see, we're, we're actually flying away from the target. And I'm going to keep doing that a little bit longer. Because I want to swing back in when I have at least 40 nautical miles. So I have lots of time to actually use the radar to find the target. So I guess one thing I could be doing here is getting the moving map up on the color display. That'll help me situate myself so I know where I am. We're getting close to the point now where we can probably turn around and still have a decent amount of time to go find the target. So let's start to turn uh, around back to the north. Now I will point out we're making it pretty easy on ourselves using the radar. First of all because the location of the range uh, is pretty easy to pick out on a radar screen because it's just to the southeast of a big lake that has a very particular shape that, that shows up very well on radar so it's easy to know where to start looking and then it's also easy to find the range target we're looking for because it's basically uh, a circle with a dot in the middle and it really does kind of stand out like a sore thumb so I'm not making it very hard on myself in terms of being able to use the radar for this task but still I think it's a good demonstration of uh, how you can actually find a target with the radar and then you can prosecute that target all the way to completion without ever actually looking at it. So we just got to pull ourselves around here and then we're going to start looking at the radar. And we're going to look for that lake and when we see it we're going to put it off the nose at least uh, 10 or 15 degrees because we want it to be outside of the uh, uh, blanking zone for the mapping modes of the radar. So we're coming around now. Get a good uh, lock up on that lake. I'm just going to put it a little bit farther off the right hand side of the nose because I want to basically go into autopilot and then spend all of my time focused on using the radar. Now obviously if you were doing multi-crew then you would have a wizzo in the back who was handling all this. So let's get into autopilot mode. I think we're far enough off the nose there so let's try oops uh, let's get back to air to ground radar mode and there we can see the lake just above the middle of the screen on the right. It's that black dot. So, uh, and let's try and see if we can pick up the area that we know. Just got to get it in range here. There, that's good. It's going to be a little bit farther off the nose. Now, it takes a few minutes to uh, give us a synthetic aperture radar image. The thing we're going to want to watch on the radar screen is there are two little circles along the bottom and those represent the minimum and maximum uh, angle off deflection that we can use uh, when whatever mapping mode we're in we want to make sure that those don't move too far to the left or the right as soon as they start going off screen we will have run out of our uh, margin so if we need to adjust our flight path to keep those you know more or less in the middle of the bottom of the screen that's what we're going to do all right, so there's the area of the range, and we can see that is the target that we're looking for to the right of the lake there. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Now that we're zoomed in a little bit, we can also adjust the radar settings here. I'm going to go from full to half, which basically means the radar isn't scanning quite as widely, but I'm also going to set it to ML2 which is just an, an interlacing mode that basically means that we're getting sort of double the data density. So I've speeded up the acquisition, but then I've also doubled the density. So it's not really going to be any faster, but hopefully it's going to give us slightly better images. And now we've reached a range where we can zoom into our final zoom level, just under 40 nautical miles. And so once we do this, we're going to actually be able to see the target pretty clearly, I think. 
Okay, so time to actually designate a target, so we go to target mode. Now, I know that I've got four bombs, and I know that um, the bombing computer is supposed to target the middle of their uh, drop pattern on the target, but it doesn't really do that in the current uh, release, so I'm going to actually aim a little bit short of the target, and because I'm pretty sure it's going to target that as the first bomb. So, rather than targeting the middle of the target. Now, this is going to put a premium on approaching the target from the right direction, I do happen to know that that direction is about 350 degrees, so we're just going to have to arrange things so that that's how we approach the target. So, at a range of 32 nautical miles, we have a good fix on our target. I'm going to fly parallel a little bit, just the radar, keep, uh, keep adding to its imagery, make sure that we don't, uh, that the target location doesn't change substantially. But now we're basically flying to the coast. You can see that the little circles have switched to the other side of the radar display, meaning it's now off our left rather than off our right. So we'll just let it go a couple more times, get a couple more images, make sure that it's not getting any better, or at least not so that it's not changing and we're still happy with our target designation. And we are, so we're going to put the master arm on. And we're going to start losing altitude. So we're headed over towards the coast now. We're going to fly over towards the coast. Uh, we're in air-to-ground mode now, as you can see. So we have a target, uh, a bomb fall line, and a target reticle. And we also have uh, a reading about exactly what our uh, bearing to target is. So basically what we want to do is we want to fly to the west until that number starts coming around to around 350 degrees, a little bit more, because we want to be approaching the target along a 350 degree vector because that's going to mean that we're going to drop the bombs down along that line, and we kind of assumed that when we picked our offset point, if that makes sense. So we're just going to get low. I'm not trying to go too fast right away. I do want to give myself time to get set up on this properly. We'll have lots of time to uh, give her the gas when we get a little bit closer. Now, I am going to point out, um, I'm not going to see it in this video, I don't think, uh, but I had been having some trouble that when I flew too low, the targeting computer was doing some odd things and moving the bomb fall line off to the right of the screen. And uh, it seemed to happen when I get down below about, I don't know, 400 feet. So I'm going to stay a little bit higher than I normally would for a loft bombing attack because I just don't want to deal with that today. Not sure if it was something I was doing or if it's, uh, if it's actually a bug in the module. Uh, either way, I don't think we need to get much lower than 500 feet to demonstrate this. So you can see we're swinging in on the target. We're probably a little bit to the left of where we want to be, still closer to north than 350. So I'm going to offset here uh, a few degrees to the right and just wait for that, uh, that target line, that target vector to come closer to 350, then we'll swing back onto it. Can tell from having flown this before we're still a little bit far off the coast as well before for, for aiming at the target if you remember in, in the other videos if you've seen them we pretty much fly parallel to the coast so we need to get in a little bit closer and we still need to get down a little bit lower but we're also still um, more than 10 nautical miles from the target after all of that Okay, getting pretty well settled in now, coming up on 10 nautical miles, getting a vector that's closer to where we want it. I think it's about time to start turning in, and we're also approaching the coast, so that lines up. So this time now, we're just going to do standard loft bombing technique. We're going to get ourselves lined up. I'm going to, I'm going to pick a loft uh, distance a little, between 5 and 6 uh, nautical miles, and at that range, I'm going to pull up and press the pickle button. Probably not going to do quite as steep a loft as I have in some of the other aircraft, partly because I just find this works better, but also uh, because with the speed that the Eagle can obtain, you don't really need um, to get the nose very high to get them dry, uh, going a long way away. You can see we're already up to Mach 0.9 almost, coming through 6 nautical miles, 400 feet, and let's pull up there. Just got to keep Pipper on the line. There's the bomb fall line, release the pressure, and there go the bombs. So, maybe not quite as far away as the Hornet lofted them, but still a pretty decent 
uh, distance, especially for not having uh, pulled up probably as strongly as we could have. Now we need to uh, pull away from the target. Helpfully in the F-15 we actually have a countdown timer so we know when to start actually looking for the bombs. It's not something we had in any of the other aircraft except maybe the Hornet. And there they go. Well, <laughs> it's pretty hard to argue with those results. Uh, as I said, we probably could have been a little bit farther away, but I don't think we could have gotten much closer to the target. So, in terms of how the F-15 performs against the other aircraft, let's take a look. Wait for the target impact tracking script to give us the answer in terms of slant range. And the accuracy. Well, uh, let's take a look. Well, slant range only 7 uh, kilometers, so I have to give the nod to the F-18 for distance, but uh, for accuracy, I don't think we've had a loft bombing that has put one uh, bomb within four meters of the target. So I'm going to call that a pretty successful loft bombing run. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, mission, seeing the Mighty Eagle in loft bombing mode, and also in radar-guided loft bombing mode. As always, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, please like it. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.